Episode two. We made it. Episode 002. If that's what you want to call it. <laughs> We're back again, man. And you know, uh, Jordan Marshall, Mike Langsner, and, and Mikey, we had uh, pretty good feedback from our first episode, huh? So far, so good. I, there's there's some troubles getting it out on the other podcast um, media, but it will be there soon. You'll hear it on uh, Spotify, Apple, as well as several others. It's taking a little bit of a challenge getting it there, but it'll be there any day now. Awesome. Very cool. And what's the one we have it at right now? Anchor.fm slash XE events. There you go. So that's a mouthful, guys, if you can remember that. Or, you know, we'll, we'll repeat it at the end of the cast again for you. Um, if you guys aren't tuned in and it's your first time checking us out, make sure you subscribe. And uh, keep tuned in for all things explosively awesome. Yeah, so we're calling this Mastering Mitzvahs. And uh, after this past weekend, we had several incredible mitzvahs that we wanted to touch on. And uh, Jordan, what was, what was the buzzword that you came up with for this? Uh, for for this one, for what we were doing, uh, mitzvah. I, I like mitzvah madness. I'm with it. We, well, no, no, no. You, you were saying the, the good and the should. Ah, you're right. You know what? The the, the should have, could have, and would have. So know? what we're going to do is uh, periodically we're going to recap our weekends. We want our listeners to get an idea of all things that were good and all things that were should. Anything that we should have done differently Cor- where we wish our clients might have done Correct. One, and 100% because we're, we're full transparency here. And, and, you know, obviously, you know, as you guys know, whether you're listening as a client, a potential client, um, a vendor, or another event professional, you know, these, these uh, you know, bar and bat mitzvah events are created, they're they are out of this world. Um, you obviously see through pictures that are all over social media, um, all the cool and innovative ideas that people are doing, but they're not easy and they don't always come together, uh, you know, exactly how, you know, we planned or we have it kind of mapped out, but we always get there, right? And, and, and you know, rave reviews, event after event. So, uh, you know, for the sake of time, we're going to jump right into it. This is going to cool. be probably a quicker podcast than some of the others, um, but there, there's three events this weekend that we wanted to review. And the first one uh, was at the Wilshire Grand on Saturday night. Jordan and I both did the event together. And it's kind of rare we get an opportunity to work together these days. It, it is true, man. You know, when we first started the company um, and, and Mike came on board, like about, what, seven years ago or so, yeah. we, uh, you know, Mike and I were kind of the grind. And uh, it was literally like starting a new company. You know, I had obviously had the explosive brand. But, you know, in all honesty, when you booked explosive entertainment, you were booking Jordan Marshall. And they were one and the same. So there really wasn't much depth. To the company, so Mike and I kind of uh, struck out and put the uh, the company on the map, and we found ourselves, you know, back at it again this weekend, which was cool. And uh, by the way, big shout out to uh, the incredible staff at Wilshire Grand, um, tremendous, tremendous time, and uh, we had a great time rocking with their staff and uh, you know everybody that runs their banquets. They run a really, really tight ship. So if you are, uh, you know, looking for a, a really cool venue and a, a spot that's uh, you know a little bit more uh, in the North Jersey area, if you're based out of our Monmouth County area, that's a great place to go. Yeah, West Orange and. You know, they had three myths was happening at the exact same time. You wouldn't have even known it. Had no idea. It was crazy. And, and literally, like, you know, just how many guests they had in their establishment at one time is amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Really cool. And, uh, you know, I think last week we touched on when you're booking a venue or booking with vendors, make sure you book people that understand bar about mitzvahs. That was a clear example. Three parties, all mitzvahs, all happening at the same time. And smooth as could be. Needless to say, they, they definitely get it. So, uh, you know, getting back to our Saturday night, this uh, this party for, uh, you know, a, a, a benat mitzvot. So if you're not familiar on, on that whole end, you know, there's obviously bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs. A benat mitzvot is uh, for two female, um, two young ladies who are having the rite of passage, uh, you know, and becoming 13 years of age in the Jewish religion. So, so Jenna and Lauren. Yes. Twins. Yes. Twins. So couldn't be any more different. So super different. Um extroverted versus introverted one was a drummer the other one was like you know super uh you know into fashion and and glamming it up and and thinking pink so to say uh, so to speak um you know pink and purple were their colors and it was really cool to kind of see um how the sisters came together in certain aspects and how they played off each other but also to see how different they were and it really allowed us uh, some great flexibility with our performance hey jordan you you work with the family personally i didn't actually meet them until the event um, which is unique for me. I usually get to meet the families, but um, through the planning, they they let you in on certain things about the the kids being different, and um, you know just some of the dynamic. I mean, did you have a good vision walking in of what you'd expect, or did things just kind of play out through the night? So for me, you know, and obviously you know this from working with me day in and day out. I love you know obviously knowing my clients and 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 knowing what they're bringing to the table and their ideas and their vision, as you just like to call it. Um, you know, for the day, but I, I don't like too much of a script. Um, I'm more of a bullet point kind of guy. 
to where I can kind of think outside the box a little bit and, and the bullet points allow me to stay on task to make sure that we, you know, bring everything from a great introduction, um, you know, into an awesome motzi of the chala, into a great candle lighting ceremony, which we had, um, an awesome mazel tov horo, some great dance sets and interactive uh, activities going on. But the big goal for me is to be able to find that, that great middle ground of structure, organized chaos, so to speak. I, I, I think that was a, a good way of putting it. There you go. Um, the family didn't have much music choice on their list, and, and I thought music at this party was exceptionally well programmed. I'm kind of patting myself on the back because I did the music, but... I, you know, I thought you played a, a great, great selection of everything, and uh, I, I, now how do you, just really quick to spin that, how does that work for you? Do you like it better when, you know, uh, a, a, you know a family will give you a lot of direction, or when they don't give you too much, and you can kind of go off your own thing? Or? I, I love when I get some direction, but not too much. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm being micromanaged, I, you know, how many parties have given me two, three, four pages of songs, and sometimes they go to the extreme and say... Play anything from page one within the first hour. Play all of these. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I get nervous in those cases, to be honest with you. I get nervous. Right. Am I going to upset them if I didn't hit every single song on their list? Mm -hmm. And I know in the back of my mind there's dozens of songs that might be better suited for those moments. So I like some direction. I like mm -hmm. when they say, hey, we, we love the 80s. you got to play a couple of 80s songs for the parents. Or, right. you know, do not play country or do not play hip-hop. If they give us, you know, do and do not... I'm very good. If they give us some direction, great. If they over manage it, to me, it becomes a little problematic. Mm -hmm. And and that that's a really really cool way to kind of break it down and look at it. And if you also notice from from our event this past Saturday, um, the event wasn't right there for us to grab right from the get, you know, and, and guys, if you're listening, you know, what I kind of mean by that is that normally, you know, sometimes when you go into an event, you have all the right ingredients, the, the energy levels at a crazy high, the adults are drinking, ready to rock and roll. The kids are just, you know, giving you all these, these great, uh, you know, characteristics and, and themes that they're into. And they're, they're just being really supportive of all the stuff that you're doing. It feels like everything's clicking and everything's moving. Now from the get on this one, not that it was, it wasn't happening, but you know, we, we really had to get them there, right? Yeah, you know, the the, the cocktail hour ended actually fifteen minutes early. Yeah, I, I think that was. Let's talk about that because for the the families that are listening, there's a structure that most bar and bar mitzvahs follow, and we try our best to not be cookie cutter, but we have a formula that truly works, and uh, we'll adjust. And actually, when we talk about a Sunday's party, there's a lot of adjustment there, but. Um, the facility wanted to bring the the adults into the main room 15 minutes early. We ran into a challenge because the photographer needed to do formal pictures with the guests of honor. Those pictures uh, took the first half hour of cocktail hour. You have twins, very different girls as we were right. explaining. So he had a, a lot to do there. So he took 30 minutes. Now on top of that, we were also supposed to do certain things during cocktail hour on our end. Yes, presentations. And right. I, and, and that trivia game too. So so we were actually given 15 minutes to really do our thing. And uh, you, you chose to actually continue with the presentations while the adults were walking in the room. And, you know, this is live and uncut, this podcast. I'm going to say I, I disagreed at mm -hmm. the moment with that call, but it worked out. Right. And, and the, kind of the reason that I went with it was that I wanted... Those speeches and presentations, as you guys know, so if you're, you're listening and planning an event, you know, your son or daughter or, you know, twins, whatever you're having, are going to have friends that are going to want to come up and say different things. You know, I find that loading these speeches up during the event takes away from the dance time, takes away from the interactivity, um, just takes away from the whole culture of the high energy type of uh, fun that you're looking to have on that day. And not that it's bad, you know, obviously these speeches are super important and, you know, the, the kids that kind of go out of their way to build these awesome testimonials, whether it's like a, a huge quilted blanket or I think the girls on, on this past Saturday made these murals, like beautiful murals for, for the girls, for both Lauren um, and her sister. And it was awesome. Um, these are great presentations, but sometimes, you know, it just kind of trickles down the line and it becomes, hey, I just want to say something to where, hey, I've known Lauren since, you know, we were in fifth grade and there was that time. And then all of a sudden you're on to chapter 12 with that same person. So, you know, I'm really all about expediting these tedious tasks that could, you know, drag out if, if uh, you know, a, a lesser uh, capable event host, you know, was, was well, kind of doing well, it, so to speak, let, Let's you know? just say, you know, our goal as a company is to Correct. get these presentations done during cocktail hour. 100. In most cases, the adults are in one room for cocktail hour, the kids are in another room. So it's a kid-only 
uh, section of what we do. The right. videographer and photographer get some pictures and you know capture those moments. Um, but then once the doors open, we were able to rock out. And in this case, right. the adults walked in to the presentations. I think that's why ramping up to the grand entrance was a little harder than normal because it wasn't doors opening mm-hmm. to high energy. It was doors were opening to low energy, actually. Right. And then we had to ramp it up rather than just start at 100 miles an hour. But if you also know the cult, if you remember the culture of mom and dad, which was really cool, you know, dad was a big talker, even remembering from his speech. Like, they're, they're very much about the testimonials and, and the love. And so I think having them being able to see the tail end of that, too, was actually appreciated as well. It's very, it's very real. So these presentations, they are very real. Um, I think as an entertainment company, we wish there was a way to uh, curb them so they don't go on and on and on. It was almost like if you give the kids a, a two minute per child uh, presentation. Mitzvah that, nugget coming at you. If awesome. you're planning, if you're planning presentations, keep them short and sweet. If people are building stuff, making things look cool, awesome. Let's show it off. But short and sweet is definitely the way to go. All right. So let, let, let's talk about something else. Games. You know, how many families ask about doing games on, on our planning sheets? It says, right. what games would you like to do? And, you know, Jordan, we did Coke and Pepsi. Yep, and, we sure uh, did. It's not something we do often. Sure don't. <laughs> uh, especially you. I, I know you don't play it very often. You're known as a high energy. Yeah. You know, somebody hires Jordan Marshall, they want it to be a high energy dance party from start to finish. Correct. It's rare that they ask to do the games. Correct. I think this was the dynamic, though, of uh, Jen and Lauren, one mm-hmm. being... You know, more into gaming and one being Correct. more into dance. Correct. And they both love summer camp and, you know, just like that whole group activity kind of feel and, and you know, they were just into it. So do, I think... Do you uh, remember how many kids they had at the party? There wasn't that many. I think there was only like 50, 40 or 50 kids. Okay. Not bad. Looking out from the DJ yeah. booth, it looked like the, the two lines of Coke and Pepsi just <laughs> kept going. It, it looked to me like 80 kids playing. Um, but why, why did you do Coke and Pepsi and... You, you did a twist to it yes. with, with their theme. Correct. So, you know, what I like to do is, like you were saying, you know, when people come to book me personally, they want a off-the-wall, high-energy, blow-the-music-through-the-roof through the kind of event, which is awesome. But if you are requesting that we do a game like Coke and Pepsi, I'm going to give you a high-energy, crazy, fun, super exciting version of Coke and Pepsi, you know? So um, I base the entire game off of my guests of honor, um, who both love summer camp and love to do different things. So, you know, instead of using typical sodas, you know, like Coke, Pepsi, 7-Up, stuff like that, um, I use things like their favorite baseball team, um, you know, their favorite television shows, their actors and actresses, um, you know, sports that they like to play, uh, you know, uh, different hobbies, all these different things that uh, became the sodas, so to speak, and, and it personalized the game. Um, it helped the game kind of, you know, go longer than just calling out sodas back and forth. When you personalize something, you're actually able to tell a story. Do you, so, do you, do you have in the back of your mind how long Coke and Pepsi should be? I, I feel like I've been at some parties where it's a 10-minute, we just got to get it done and go back to dancing. I've been at other parties where 30 minutes Coke and Pepsi is still going on. So uh, it, that's a great question. So, you know, I'm, I'm a big, a uh, huge believer in knowing your surroundings and if you hear Mike and I speak or, or any of us speak this is such a huge huge thing so my head's always up I'm looking to see if the kids are enjoying the game if they're really into it or they're just kind of going through the motions I'm looking to see if the adults around the room are into it and watching it if they're laughing if they're chuckling if they're having a great time so I did notice those things as, as I was playing more and more the game just kind of took on a, a, a beast of its own, you know, and it just, it, it, it did go a little bit longer, I think, than the normal Coke and Pepsi game, but I think it fit, you know, for the, and, for the party. We and, and, and a tip to the listeners, nugget number two, I guess. It's two, today. the second nugget. The prizes were awesome. JBL yes. headphones. In, Correct. In family was smart enough to get two identical so that the Coke side and the Pepsi side Correct. each went home with it. And, and let, the last Coke and Pepsi question for, for you, how do you feel about the guest of honor Kind of being the winner. I know some DJs right. always make the guest of honor the winner. That that's not the case with you. And no, you know. So I I actually this is something that I'll talk about with my guest of honor in my pre meeting. So if they uh, if there's an inkling that they might want to play this game or this game might want to go down, I'll be like, hey, so you know how are we going to do this? Who's the winner going to be? Do you want it to be one of your friends? Do you want it to be you? And I'll say nine times out of ten, like nowadays, just because of the spirit of competition and you know the kids wanting the, the kids are very giving towards their their friends and the people at their party. They want them to have a blast. So they're like, no, hey, listen, call the game down the line. You know, they wanted, whoever wins gets these great prizes. So, like, you know, my, I, it was really cool. Um, Mom you know, and Dad had spent a yeah, fortune on the party. They, they did. They didn't need to just 
get headphones for the, their their kids. Correct. Um, so I, I think it was really cool that two kids did Super get cool. to go home. And it's, and it's also a great way for games like this if you are going to implement, you know, whether it's a trivia game or, you know, Coke and Pepsi or, you know, uh, some sort of uh, interactive activity throughout the course of, of these events – Possibly having higher-ended prizes for the one or two winners is a great way to kind of get that game to really take some some cool life too. Yeah. You know, so uh, th- that was that was our Saturday party. I, I want to move on to another party that happened on Saturday. Uh, neither Jordan or I were at it, of course. You know, we were up in West Orange, but there was another party that happened. And uh, always at the end of the night, I'm always texting the team. You know, how did it go? Uh, what's the feedback? And uh, even some of our payroll process is. The staff has to fill out a event report of uh, all the things that went well, and right. if there's anything that they would do differently. And um, I, I don't want to say where or who this event was for, but the staff, all the DJs, the dancers, the MCs, they all reported back. It was a difficult party. It ended very strong. It started a little bit weak, and they said, um, you know, it, it, it. They really had to work. They really had to hustle right. to make that party successful. Um, now, Mike, can you elaborate on that a little bit? When we say we got really got to work to make it come to fruition, what are we talking well, about? Well, you know, they both they all said that if the audience was more energetic and more into it, they didn't feel that the audience was into it. So they had to pull. They had to grab. Right. You know, there's some parties that right off the bat, you play the first song and it's a packed dance floor. Right. You know, just the MC gets on the mic and, and very simply, ladies and gentlemen, we need you out here to rock out with our guest of honor. And it, it's they, they react Instantly. They're almost there before the comment. Yeah. Then there's those other parties that, you know, you as an MC can mm-hmm. say it four, five, six times, you know, I, how many times have you said, DJ, cut the music, maybe they don't hear me. Right. You know, this seemed to be one of those parties. Okay. Um, interestingly, during the week, I, I was, you know, talking with the family and I said, are you guys excited? You ready? And they, their response was, we just can't wait for it to be over. And that was a frustrating thing for me to hear midweek, Wednesday, right. Thursday. And, you know... I dug a little bit, and they said, "Well, we're we're excited, but there's just so much planning. It's so stressful." I was going to say they were probably talking about more about the buildup and what has gone into this mm-hmm. this day that's going to literally be over in, in a matter of eight hours, start to finish. Right. You know. Well, you know what I think is the family went into it saying those words. We can't wait for this to be over. These things shouldn't be a chore. You should be excited about right. it, and there should be a lot of buildup and right. and anxiety and and you know. Curiosity. Um, I think when they got there, I, and I wasn't there, so I'm, I'm kind of spitfire and just yeah, you know. It. But I think that our staff felt that, and maybe some of the guests felt that. Right. They didn't go in there as host and hostess or guests of honor mm-hmm. on the dance floor, motivating their friends. I mean, we, our dancers we call them dance floor motivators, right. but the ultimate motivator at an event is the host and hostess. Correct. It's the guest of honor. If they're on the dance floor. The guests follow suit. If they're at the bar hanging out, having conversation, well, yeah. what's going to happen with the guests? You know, Mike, I mean, that's probably one of the great... That's nugget number three, ladies and gentlemen. That's a huge one. You're getting a lot of content on this podcast right now. We're not even we're not even done. But uh, that's a really great point. Um, you know, as Mike was saying, like, being in the mix at your own event is so huge. The more you're smiling, the more excitement, the more you're just pumped for your day and interactive and in it... Fun is contagious, ladies and gentlemen. You know, when you see somebody having fun, especially the person that you're celebrating for, like, oh my God, man, Jackie looks so great on her bot mitzvah. She's out there smiling, getting crazy. You know what? Let's just get out there. Let's, let's you know, let's support this thing. Let's do it. You know, it's so much easier and more inviting to, to be a part of someone who's having a great time. I, I think that was my Sunday party. So it's big. Um, let, let's, let's transition from this party that did end very well and the guests were very happy and you know we got great compliments afterwards um, but it wasn't a 10 from start to finish okay. you know it, which it, you know and and that's real world stuff folks you know like it every single event though we do get you there in a, in a great way and, and our company does tremendous tremendous events they're not all easy they're not all the you know drinking 70 foot bottles of cristal and you know you, crazy you know performers what, and, when, when a client sits with us during a sales process yeah. and they ask why explosive? Mm-hmm. I think the answer that we give very often is if you need that extra motivation, if your guests need that extra push, an average DJ is not going to make that happen. We we took that six or seven start and ended with a 10, but if the DJ wasn't of our level, and not to say that we're the best, but there's a lot of you know lesser quality companies out there, 
if somebody went in there with less energy, mm -hmm. less experience, they may not have been able to pull off the same party that we were able to pull off. Correct. Correct. And it's funny because all this it, it is honestly going on behind the scenes, you know? So just knowing that your entertainment company has this kind of mentality and that they're going that even you know if it's not in your face when you guys are out there having a blast like just knowing that that's their thought process like that that's a really good and comforting uh you know thing for you guys you know, fa families often say you know we realize the dj makes or breaks the party and yep i i appreciate that but i actually say i think the the host and hostess make or break the party the dj is, is there to build on it but the host and hostess the guests of honor they make or break the party 180 billion percent correct that's such a great great point so let's, let's talk about Sunday, because Sunday was the polar opposite. This family was ready to rock. Sun, and it's so funny, because we were, we were actually talking about this event on Sunday. This was a little bit more of a unique event actually coming to, to, to Explosive and, and performing it, right? Yeah. Um, so the, the dynamic, and, and this one only booked a couple months ago. You know, sometimes we're booking Yeah, it was, just, it was a pretty quick booking. Yeah, yeah. We, we booked two years out sometimes. This one was maybe three or four months ago. And it looked like it had three-year or three year production on it. Yeah. Um, you know, like... So, so um, V Squared Events, uh, Nikki runs a company called V Squared Events. Big shouts, our girl Nikki. You're she, the best. Thank she, you. She is awesome. Nikki and Explosive have been doing a lot of work together lately. Uh, she runs a talent and modeling agency, and she's got some incredible performers in her roster. Uh, she happened to know the host of the party. Um, she works with him in a different capacity. And uh, he trusted her and said, Nikki, I need you to put together you know, a, a bat mitzvah for my family. My daughter Jordana, or Jordy, as you know, she likes to be called. Um, the host knows uh, the High Lawn Pavilion very well, Correct. Uh, up in West Orange as well. So I was there Saturday and Sunday. Um, so they they had the venue on lockdown. They had Nikki, and Nikki said, "Mike, I, I need your team to to DJ and MC." She provided the dancers. She provided all the other talents. So it was unique for us to go in with with you know just equipment, a DJ and an MC, and we brought a tech, Nick, uh, Nikki K, who's listening. Nikki's the best. He is the dude. He that is. dude, let me tell you, man, some programming, some lights, and he's a beast. He, he could do it all. So this was a Mardi Gras theme party. Today is actually Fat Tuesday, as a matter of fact. It we're, sure is. We're recording this right now on Tuesday, March 5th. I don't know when this is going to be a podcast air waves, but it's actually Mardi Gras right With now. With no cervezas needed. Uh, cervezas. That's kind of not Mardi Gras. Yeah, well, of course. Hurricanes. Beers. Hurricanes. Well, now, see, Mike, now he took it to liquor. I was going with beer. I was starting people off nice and easy here this morning. But if we're going to take it that way, I guess it's whatever. Listen, I, <laughs> I just celebrated Bourbon Street style. So, so listen, this party Sunday, uh, it was from 3 to 8. Um, you know, before I kind of get into the nitty-gritty of it, um, when Mom gave her speech and toast, she talked about when Jordy was born, it snowed at her baby shower. It snowed. Now, now, this isn't me, Jordy. This is the actual Bob Mitzvah girl. Jordan. Jordan. Right, yes. okay, cool. Yes. Just, Mike and, doesn't call me Jordy, guys, just if you're wondering. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> d during Mom's speech, and she says, you know, when the weather forecast says today it's going to snow, and it was almost instantly that it did start snowing, and uh, Mom referred to her as Queen Elsa from, from Frozen. Frozen. Yeah. And uh, that was the very last thing that she said in her speech. And instantly, I, I typed in, let it go, and... As Mom ended her speech, that was the song that played, and that those are the moments of Bar and Bat Mitzvahs that I love. That things that can't be scripted or thought out. I didn't know what Mom was going to say in her speech. I had no idea she was going to reference snow, and instantly I had the Frozen theme song. But when playing. you heard it, you were you felt Quick. it. You're like, I got this. Thank God I have a four year old daughter. And yeah. I have this stuff in my playlist. <laughs> so, um, hey, Evan, this one's for you. And and even the TVs, you know, Jordy's logo was on the TVs. But as soon as she said that, I had snowflakes coming down on the TV. You know what, man? I'm actually going to dial back just for thirty seconds. You did a great job with the media content on Saturday night too. I love having that. to place place the names from our from our daddy daughter dance. So mm -hmm. really quick, guys. So for our the party that we did that we told you guys about at the beginning of the cast on at the Wilshire for their daddy daughter dance, we had a lot of media content with screens and TVs going on. This is media, first of all, guys. Uh, for all you guys listening, is a great way that you guys can now tell the story about your family, your guest of honor through visuals. You know, you're doing it through all this great music. Bring visuals to the table is huge, so you should definitely consider that if, you, uh, if you're not doing so already. Um, but back to what I was saying is that, is that Mike did a great job. Uh, each daughter, each twin daughter, shared a specific uh, designated time and song to dance with their father to. So when Lauren was up dancing, Mike was very smart on his own, had the Lauren graphic up, made sure her name was up in lights, and made sure that everything was awesome and good to go on the Lauren end. And then when his, her sister came up, 
uh, vice versa. He, he incorporated the proper logos. So it's just, and these were all things that we didn't discuss. We didn't rehearse. There was no, uh, all right, when, when the dances happen, this is going to happen. Mike was just thinking on his toes. And that's the such a huge difference between somebody that is forward thinking and somebody who really gets it versus somebody who's less seasoned. I, I personally love media. And, you know, I, I when I first got into mixing video, which was now, I don't know, 15 years ago, 12 years ago, something like that. It was a great challenge. You know, right. I, I got to a point where mixing music became second nature, but involving video and media and content, that was a whole other ballgame. And I, I love that. That keeps me on my toes. Keeps, you you, keeps you and Jeff there. Scott, man. That's yes, it. Yes, sir. JSG. Big shout out to JSG. So um, speaking of media and going the extra mile, when we got to the Highland Pavilion, if you've never been in that space, the room is shaped like the letter T. And the adults and the kids sat at the top part of the T and they can't see the dance floor. So yeah, I was going to say the line of sight for everything is No, yeah, line all of, out of whack. Line of sight's tough there. The venue is amazing. You got a beautiful view of the New York City skyline. Mm -hmm. And that's where the guests sit. They they see the skyline, but the dance floor is on the other side of the T, the right. long where I'd call it the bottom end of the T. When we got there, we knew that that's where our sound was going. But in t and, and no matter how many times you plan these things, when you get there, you start seeing, all right, this is where they're putting the bar. This is where they're putting the buffet. Um, there was airbrush people doing temporary tattoos. There were so many things that needed space. Mm -hmm. We looked at it, and actually Nick kind of saved the day because I was, I was very nervous on where to put the TVs, where the guests would be able to see right. it. Uh, from their seats. Otherwise, we're going to have to invite 150 people to stand for a montage. Well, plus, it's also not like you're 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 designing a wedding, you know, which is great. You got dance sets, but there's so much happening with a mitzvah that you got to like plan like schematics for like you know proper spacing for different things. Like you probably had a lot going on that you were trying to troubleshoot too. Yeah. So so you know, thinking out of the box, I had the idea of putting one TV kind of angled off to the side, but it wasn't going to be very symmetrical mm -hmm. and. Nick says, Mike, how much HDMI cables do you have? Do you have extra splitters? And, of course, I always bring extra everything. I'm like Radio Shack you know, right. with my wire bins. Wires and connectors. And and what we ended up doing was we put two TVs right next to, I'll call it a mini dais table. They had uh, you know five or six kids, you know, kids sitting at the head table that faced, uh, faced the dance floor. To the right and the left were where the kids were and the adults were. We catty-cornered two TVs right next to them. It took uh, about 75 feet of HDMI, which is wow. tricky because you kind of lose signal around that length. Um, but we had, you know, we had splitters, we had amplifiers on the, the lines. We tested everything in advance. Because Nick made that judgment call, we were able to then have the adults and kids all see the TVs at all times. Right. So, you know, it wasn't your typical setup. You didn't walk in and see the speakers next to the TVs with the stages in front. TVs and lights were on a whole other... Would you have done TVs in another situation? Do you think if you could do it all over again, maybe do like our video wall, or maybe like would you have presented the video differently? The only thing I would have done differently, I would have brought the wireless HDMI setup that we have. It okay. would have required less cabling. We did have to do a lot of taping down of wires, but mm -hmm. um, I think the positioning was perfect, and you didn't want to impede in the view of New York City either. Correct. So a video wall would have blocked a lot of that okay. view. Uh, Fair enough. So... I, the, the setup was great, and there wasn't a whole ton of media, but being able to show the montage, uh, the photo booth pictures, and our zap pictures was key through the night. So awesome. let's let's talk about the energy and the theme. So being a Jordi Gras right. theme party, a little play on words Yes, here. tell me about this. I like this. Uh, Nikki brought in, uh, right off the bat, when guests walked in, there was a human table. Um, human table is basically a costumed uh, model inside of a circular table and not just a model, but somebody with personality and, right. and, and you know that, that knows the poses and the gestures. That's great. She was greeting guests and giving them their place cards. Really so cool. that was right off the bat. It's awesome. Then they had a spectacular stilt walker. And I've, I've done a lot of events with stilt walkers. But this girl was dancing on stilts. She was, like, posing pictures. She was so decked out in all the Mardi Gras colors, the gold, the green, and the, the purple. The outfit, the attire... So it was, it was like sick. Attack of the 50-Foot Motivator. Sick. It was awesome. <laughs> um, in a very good way. So cool. Then uh, Nikki brought in a brass band, and, and, and this band was so cool because... I saw them playing the video you sent me, dude. They were like straight out of like Burbage, like New Orleans. Like, awesome. I thought I was like right there. Awesome. They were I, killer. I wish I got video of a lot of it, but they did like Eurythmics, Sweet Dreams. What? With This dude was playing a tuba. Another guy had a, a trombone. There was a sax. It, it was so cool. Very well done, and 
you know, we work with musicians all the time. These guys were real musicians, no divas. They had no microphones. Now, do they always go out like that as, as a group? Or I have no it... idea, because if you looked at them, like one guy was wearing a suit, another guy was wearing like a t-shirt. Like <laughs> There was no rhyme or reason. Just like you'd be them. being out in New Orleans in the middle of the street. Man, they were so good. They have to play together regularly, because right. they yeah. were so in tune with each the other. The video sounded amazing. There was no notes. They, they you know One guy just called out a song, and they all started playing it. Um, they played Ico Ico. Okay. Like, it was just super, like stuff you super never cool. would have thought. A, yep. a, like a band like that would be doing. So that was cocktail hour. You know, a, a great food spread. Um, now was it New Orleans themed? Um, not cocktail hour okay. per se, but at the end of the night, the human table became uh, a to go food station, and she had uh, beignets. I think they're called. Okay. Um, yeah, the beignets. Those so, are big. Uh, all powdered donuts? Yeah, they, I mean, basically like a um, New Orleans style Zeppeli, I guess. Or like, a, like a rounder, circular funnel cake. Yes, yes. So, yeah. guess we're taking beignets to go, and I had them on my drive home. If you guys are ever legitimately in New Orleans, the beignets, that's what's up. You awesome. Gotta, you got to try those. Um, so, Cocktail Hour was this band. There was the Airbrush Tattoos. Mm-hmm. There was a mirror photo booth. Um, there was the Stilt Walker, the Human Table, and a lot, a lot, a lot of drinking. It's awesome. The uh, I should say that the dad works in the liquor business, so he and his friends are. Big I'm takers. not gonna lie, I was uh, you know I was getting videos. Mike, you know, sends me little videos and stuff throughout the day, just show me how stuff's going. This literally looked like a rager Saturday night peak hour, and I kept looking at my watch because I'm like, dude, it's like it's Sunday afternoon, and this thing is going off. It was sick. Now, High Lawn Pavilion again, nugget number four. We'll call this four. The okay. fourth nugget. Windows facing. New York City. I've okay. said, it, said it three or four times. Right. The downside is there's no blinds. So it was daylight in that room until about And there's nothing you could do about it. Nothing we could do about it. So cocktail hour, great to see the New York City skyline. Right. Once it became time to start the party, though, it was broad daylight in there. It, a little harder to get the party started Correct. during that time. Um, and, and we looked at each other. You know, Joe, who was the MC, who was tremendous. Um, we looked at each other. We said... You know, once it gets dark, this thing's going right. to be epic. And there were so many cool elements that we knew were coming through the night. So Grand Entrance was good. Um, I should also say that half of the family was Italian, very Italian, and uh, many of the guests have never been to a bar about mitzvah. Okay. So that sometimes plays a little bit of a unique challenge, but it's also an advantage because they're not over it. They haven't been to dozens and dozens of mitzvahs. There's that culture barrier. Yes. I um, get it. It was actually the first time ever I played the Tarantella at a mitzvah. Okay. Uh, That's usually a wedding thing. I played uh, Angelo Venuto's version of Sweet Caroline early okay. in the night, which would have normally been a late night kind so of thing. So you found yourself mob hitting it up. An Il Italiano. <laughs> Great song. And, and actually, Joe, um, we had a two hour long dance set at the end of the night. All of Straight? The, yeah. So all the formalities were early. Let me actually touch on both these topics. We knew that the family wanted a drink, they were going in hard. Mm-hmm. So they had asked us through the planning, how do we get the speech done early, mom's toast? How do we get the father-daughter done, dance done early? Now, th- those things would have normally been after dinner, after montage. So we twisted the timeline a little bit, and they happened within the first 30 minutes, actually, of the party. There was cocktail hour, grand entrance. Candle lighting was only four candles, so candle lighting was super fast. And after the candle lighting, there was a surprise performance. Um, Dad is friends with um, Giorgio. Okay. Giorgio is the singer from... I was going to say, for all you guys listening out there, yes, that is No Speak Americano, right? Yes. That yes. track. Giorgio rocked this song. He came out here, kind of resembled the L.E.G., I have to say. <laughs> it was, he was, uh, you know what, the, I was going to say, the video you sent me, man, his, his wardrobe was pretty bright. So He was doing it. <laughs> you know, normally a father-daughter dance is a slow, sentimental moment. And in this case, we did candle lighting. Mm-hmm. Lit the last candle, blew out the candles, and actually just before blowing out the candles, Joe had asked all of the guests to stand. He was very strategic. Asked all the guests to stand and make a big circle around the dance floor. He told them it was good luck for them to be standing as part of the candle lighting. Awesome. But what he was actually doing was setting up the next moment. And Giorgio all of a sudden comes out and starts singing really high energy, We Know Speak Americano, which is right. a club song for those of you who don't know. And Dad and Jordy danced But for, I guarantee you've heard it before, if you've listened. To totally. It. Dad and Jordy danced for maybe 20 or 30 seconds before everybody joined okay. in. Okay, so they had their feature time. Yes, and if Joe didn't preset that by having all the guests standing, I don't know that the guests would have joined in, but they were ready on dance floor. So Joe, Rockstar Joe, on his end. Yeah, made that awesome. happen. Uh, Giorgio then did a second song, 
Um, actually, right from there is when we went into Sweet Caroline. Right. Un- unplanned, but you know, we had this whole Italian thing going, so let's play okay. Angelo Venuto right then and there. Sweet Caroline, which then went into the horror. So we went straight Italy right into straight Jewish. So I like that. So, Mike, do you think this is this is actually something cool that maybe our, our listeners can kind of um, you know apply to their uh, bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah? So it doesn't really have to be a, a, a slow song, like for a, a daddy, daughter, or a mother, son. Like no. if you want to do something cool and upbeat. Super cool. That's like a cool way to kind of throw a twist on it. I know that when I got bar mitzvah, and I, you know, I didn't, I don't even remember what the song was, but it was definitely slow because I was not moving fast at that age. So, but I, I would like to see your mom. Yeah. Best dance, actually. <laughs> you know what my mom, I'll tell you, hey, don't listen. You call her out. She'll be right there doing it. Okay. She'll be right there doing it. So because we did all these formalities up front, this is what left us with the two hour dance right. at the end. So there, there is the challenge presented in this, and mm-hmm. no matter how many times you think that you go to a party, you dance nonstop for two or three hours, it doesn't happen typically. There's a lot of breaks. Now, did you guys work in any games at all? At this? No, no games. Okay. They, didn't, they did not want to do any games. So we, um, the, well, the only game was Kahoot. We okay. did Kahoot, which is a digital trivia game. Uh, that was during dinner time. The adults had dinner uh, after the kids. So right. kids ate quickly, and then we did Kahoot. Uh, and actually, we talked about presentations earlier in this podcast. Presentations in this case was very different. Like, good, good segue, good thought here. We wanted to do presentations during cocktail hour. Okay. That was the plan all along. Little did we realize that this brass band was going to be so loud. Right. There's no way to Well, there's it. no way to control those instruments, too, no. either. If they're playing, they're playing. You they're can hear them. Playing loud. This dude with his tuba was in it. <laughs> <laughs> so... The, also, this venue is all one room, so the, it's not like we had the kids in a separate area okay. to do cocktail hours. So we had to make a judgment call to do presentations later in the night, and we actually decided to do it off microphone when the adults were having their pasta and their salad course. Okay. We, the reason why we chose to do it off microphone, we didn't want the adults to be trying to have dinner and, and have conversations. Have, have to speak over that or screaming over two, you know, uh, twenty minutes of presentations. It's nice enough they didn't have to listen to a ratchet hit by hip hop set, right? It's so. so true. <laughs> so presentations happened a little bit earlier. It happened during the adults' first two courses over in the kids' area. Okay. Um, and there were a ton of presentations, so that worked out really See, well. See, again, ton of presentations, folks. Less is more. <laughs> in game day decisions too. I mean, this whole day was all about handling curveballs. Yep. Um, so now we had this two-hour dance set at the end of the night, and you know we were rocking, and, and I mean the liquor was flowing, the adults were dancing, the kids were awesome. Uh, it was one of those parties that the kids wanted hip hop, the adults wanted some freestyle. I mean it, we were all over the place, and Joe looks at me and says, "I think des- dessert's about to come out. Why don't we sit the adults?" And I said, "I don't know, man. I, I felt like it was a Sunday. It was snowing. If you gave them any opportunity to they have cake the, and coffee, the, here's my jacket. I'm hitting the door." Out. So I, I, this, is, this is where the curveball came in, and this is where the Italian music came in. Okay. Let's change it up. Save the day. So um, dessert comes out, and I played Italian music. Right. And it rocked. Dad was out there making a circle with all of his guy friends. People were singing along, whether you were Italian or not. Right. It was such that left turn that was needed to change the dynamic in the party. And I'll, I'll be honest, too. You know, People have been drinking. So yeah. They're probably feeling good. These yeah. songs come on that make you feel good. You want to sing it. You want to belt it out. It was... Definitely, you know, it sounds like it was the perfect timing for something like that. It was awesome. That then led into the last 45 minutes of the dance party, and uh, the night flew by. It was such a cool, different party from the live performer, the still walker, all of these unique elements. Again, big shout out to Nikki from V Squared for putting this whole party it's amazing. together. And Mike, that's actually a really good uh, kind of, um, you know, play off of our last week's segment when we were talking about leaning on other professionals. I, that's definitely the route mm-hmm. that she took, right? No doubt about it. And uh, I mean, Nikki and Explosive have now worked together on a good handful of events. But yep. you would have thought that we've been doing this together hundreds of times by the, the, the flow that the two companies had together. It's amazing. So, ladies and gentlemen, folks, quick tail of the tape, a little recap for you. Um, went over some great content. Uh, for those of you guys listening, some really cool ideas for you guys to uh, possibly incorporate into your next big day, your bar mitzvah, your bat mitzvah, b'nai, b'nai, whatever you're planning. Um, you have different ideas for live entertainment. Uh, brass band, uh, that New Orleans style street band if you're looking for a cool uh, Mardi Gras type theme. Uh, Human tables, really, really cool. Um, These are great and can be used as greeters. Uh, If you want to do a cool display with your invitation or uh, your place cards, excuse me, for when guests arrive at your venue, really cool idea. Human tables, awesome. Uh, Stilt walkers, really cool stuff. You have like a carnival or anything that, you know, you want to just have a a really cool, um, you know, kind of pop piece. Uh, We call it a wow factor. It it was actually... um 
the 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 term uh, now is going. I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, La Hora Loca. La Hora Loca, the, the the crazy hour. The crazy hour. It's a um, was it Hispanic or, or Mexican tradition? It, it is of a of a Sp- it's a Spanish descent. So it, it's basically the crazy hour where all things you know get crazy for one hour. Lights, live music. It's, it's supposed to be the last hour of a party. Correct. That was the twist at this party to do the first hour. Okay, and so it was okay. That's what happened with all the beads being given out and the stilt walker. So it's kind we, of kicked we, it off. We, we did uh, La Hora Loca, you know, in the first hour, a little prima hour. I, guess I guess. love it. I love it. Um, and and let, let's end on let's end this on one thing. What do the families not see of us doing events? Well, this job was from three o'clock to eight o'clock. Oh yeah, that's true. I had to leave my house at ten thirty in the morning. Mm-hmm. Get to the office by eleven thirty ish. Get the van. Drive up to North Jersey for uh, twelve thirty. Two and a half hours of setup time, and we needed every minute of it. Correct. Um, Probably we, could have done with three or three and a half. We rocked out yeah. this party, and now there's you know four, five, six inches of snow on the ground. We're breaking down. This is the stuff that people don't see. Yes, our glo- our jobs are awesome. Our mm-hmm. gl- you know, we love. They don't see the glamorous part. The glamorous part, as we like to call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The glamorous part is uh, trekking to the, <laughs> the the truck that's parked way in the back of the parking lot because you can't leave it in the first two spots. And if I was there, I'd been wearing a pair of Vans. I, I would have been soaked right through. I was wearing running shoes that were soaked. Yeah. <laughs> um, our, our ramp to load everything in and out of the truck was slippery as could be. I mean, imagine. A lot of workman's comp issues were going on. Yes, and you pull out of the parking lot, and the very first thing you see is cops blocking the highway there because it was just an accident. Of course there was. Two-hour drive home, maybe 35 miles an hour the whole way. There was uh, you know, stuck behind plows, and that is the glamour behind what we do. And, and we continue to do this countlessly, and we love it, and we'll be in it weekend after weekend. And thank so, you guys. Let, let me ask you this. Would you rather do this on a 100-degree breakdown day or would you rather do it on a snowy winter day? Can't we go somewhere that's just got great weather? I'm just asking you a question. <laughs> it's A or B. Oh, man. See, I'll, 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 see none of the above. Yeah. They yeah. both, you know, I mean, like, weather just obviously plays a part, you know? So what, what are you going to do? But you know what I mean? Like, I, the excitement of everything. And then that high that you're on after you crush and you literally make these people have the greatest time ever and they're just coming up to you and being like that was the greatest night that we've had in a minute it leaves you on a high so all that breaking down is is done really quick and you know we're, I'm, I'm cruising on it so yeah man so that's cool let's take this as to a wrap and nice uh, thank you to all the listeners yes guys episode 002 and uh we hope you guys uh enjoyed it thanks for tuning in to mike and myself and uh if you guys need any other information make sure you check us out if you're not checking us out already xcevents.com uh, at XE Events through our Instagram. You can see all kinds of cool stuff there. On Facebook, just look us up at Explosive Entertainment with no E. It's just X-P-L-O-S-I-V-E Entertainment. My name is Jordan Marshall. Michael Langsner. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye.